my first job out of college was working at a place similar to the one that's portrayed in the movie, and uh, the the Nate character encompasses all of the feelings and fears that I had during my first couple months working there. Looking at myself, who I was at that time, it was it was an an unhealthy way to view the situation. Uh, I thought that I was going in there to to help people and to to change people and make their lives better. When in reality, by the end of it, I had learned more about myself and grown more um, myself than I, I ever had before. So that's that's where the story uh, blossomed from. I, I was developing the, the screenplay with um, Asher Goldstein and Marin Olson, who are in the house. Um, they they helped. I was I was getting notes from them throughout the course of of the second rewrite of the script over the course of about three months or so um, leading up to the the nickel submission and I, uh, I I submitted because a friend told me about it I didn't know that much about it and I submitted and forgot about it and um, at the time of the announce that they announced the finalists and that started happening I'd completely forgotten about it and I was also on the verge literally of giving up on this script and this story and it was um, it was a time that I had received quite a bit of rejections uh, which is just a part of every process of any <laughs> any um, but you know it, it was at the point where I was just like all right I gotta move on to something else and um, that's that's when I got those those first uh, those first nods where um, that you that you we made it to the quarterfinals. That was like the first thing, and that was enough. I was just like, okay, well, there's something, there's something here, and it was such a boost of encouragement. No, Short Term Twelve was a short film first, yeah. uh, and you you premiered that in that was in Sundance as well. Did that help you get get it to the fe feature length? The short film, basically, what happened, and uh, when when we won the Nickel Fellowship, that allowed me. That, that fellowship allowed me to survive that year and write another screenplay. Um, and I actually saved up that money that they gave me and used it to make my first feature called I Am Not a Hipster, which was my, the script that I wrote during my fellowship year. That was extremely helpful, I think, in taking the next step with Short Term 12. Yeah. I had done films that were not for as many days in someone's skin that's going through such a hard period of time. And I've, and it would take, you know, I'd film something for two weeks and it would take me three months of therapy to get out of it because you can't help but start bringing up your own things. And next thing you know, you've created these problems in yourself that you don't know how to deal with. Um, a big part of it was actually being on the floor and, and shadowing a woman who's in the field. And you can't help but just feel how much strength it takes to get through one day on the floor with those kids, let alone doing it for a week or a year or 17 years. And I think the woman, I think she actually had been in it 23 years by the time that I had met her. And so that was one of my questions. How, how, do, you, how do you stay so strong? How do you stay so clear? Her eyes are so clear. And um, she said, you let go. And it was as if it was, you know, something that had taken her a really long time to understand, but now it's just her mantra, which is you, you're there, you're focused, you give it everything that you have, and then you go home and you don't fight anymore. You release, you take a bubble bath, you knit, you watch South Park, which is my personal choice, and, you know, you do those things and you forget about it. And you have to save a little bit for yourself, and if you don't, then eventually, and it might not happen in the first week, but eventually you'll crack, and then you're of no use to really anybody. There are a few scenes that, I mean, I don't know if it kills the magic to say that just didn't make it in the movie, but that always happens. But I am so happy that those scenes were shot because they're not necessary for the film, but they were necessary for me to inform me of other sides of grace that I was able to explore, and then that brought me back to who she was again. Mm -hmm. It's interesting as you go through that very strange creative process of making a film that you don't know 
how to schedule anything when it comes like we've got this big thing and we're gonna shoot out of order and then we're gonna these are the least important maybe but these are also important and then and it's magic and that's the thing that was so interesting is you release yourself to the process and you go for it and um, we were all very loving and very patient and uh, I feel like Destin with this film it being so much about love and, and parent and child and the human connection, I feel so lucky to have worked with this person and to know this person and to know these people. I think it's very brave to write a really selfless character. I think like high stakes drama usually involves a lot of selfishness and, and people really wanting things from each other or coveting things. And I was so blown away when I read the script for the first time that, that Destin had just written such a realistically selfless, loving, caring, patient, understanding, supportive person. And I was so moved by it. In a way, too, there's a, there's a thing where I think as the film goes on, you, you might start thinking like, well, gosh, is this guy just a doormat or something? Like, what, what? And then there's this lovely reveal in the last act where you see where he comes from. And that's why I think it's so easy uh, for him to take care of the kids all day and then go home and continue to take care of someone that he also loves very deeply all night and then do it all over again the next day. If I'm not mistaken, you're the only actor who was in the short film of Short Term 12. So you yes. came back. Yes. Uh, did you play Marcus in the, in the short as well? I played Mark in the short. And in the other version, I played Marcus, which is basically an evolution of... of of Mark. <laughs> <laughs> the grown up version of Mark. Okay. <laughs> I felt like it had been five years between the short and this, and I felt like I was, they say in five years, all your atoms, like you're constantly gaining and losing atoms, right? So every five years, you have a new set of, like a full new set of atoms. So basically, you're a new person. Mm -hmm. And that's how I felt. I felt like I had so much more life experience and was a lot more comfortable on set at that time. So. I felt like a new person, so I felt Marcus should probably be a new person. Yeah. You did two songs on the film, including the song over the end credits, After Party? Uh, three, if you count uh, Vicious, which was playing when I did the bloody massacre scene. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. but <laughs> when you sent me the script, uh, I saw the original rap, and I was like, what the hell <laughs> is going on here? <laughs> but you know what was, what was crazy about it is his template was perfect. I actually told him the other night, like, we should form a band and you write all the templates <laughs> and then I'll come back and, and just spice it up, dirty it up a little bit. Because that's basically what we did. Like, he had the, the bear rap and I really liked the, the flow and the way it was going and it was telling the story accurately. But it just didn't seem to, it didn't feel real, like, for someone who's been rapping so long. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I actually, I actually rap, so I was just like, mm -hmm. all right, I'll go back in and then, um, and then that was the final product. It was yeah. his template, my sprinkles. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sprinkles, <laughs> sprinkles, okay. <laughs>